Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. I'm Peter and today I'm playing through Hadrian's Wall. I am playing a solo version of Hadrian's Wall, which is a roll and write game, although I guess it's some people are calling them flipping fills or whatever you want to call it because there is no actual, um, there's writing for sure, but there's no rolling because there's no dice in this game. So you're going to be flipping cards as your randomizers uh, in the game. Uh, it is a multiplayer game traditionally, but they do have solo rules in the back. We are going to play with the rules as they are written in the back, where basically we are trying to get to 70 or more points to get the highest score. But don't fret if you hate these high score games. There is a campaign where there are other challenges that you're doing as well. You have different forts that you're going to be playing. They're going to change the rules as you are playing the game. So, uh, But today I am just showing you the base game. There are also different difficulties levels and this works for multiplayer as well where you're going to be drawing a different number of attackers basically who are going to attack your wall at the end of the round and you're going to be scoring more victory points based on which attackers like or how many attackers you can hold off that kind of thing um so we've got green level yellow and red which makes zero difference in round one but by the end of the game it makes a decent amount of difference as far as how many different cards you're going to draw. Um, but if you have any questions throughout the game, let me know. I'm going to go over the rules really quickly first. I'm not going to go over every detail of every rule, especially this right side, which is, oh my goodness, there's a lot going on. And if you see this, this is two pads of paper here. There's this left pad, which is pretty straightforward. You probably pick out up on it pretty quickly and then there's this right side which I don't even know that I have fully explored in fact I know I haven't fully explored and we are not going to fully go over every little thing today um, about that but uh, and so we're not doing the campaign we're not doing like any of these AI adventure stuff any of this stuff um, overall so we are just going to focus on playing a one-off game and honestly the rules between this and multiplayer are absolutely zero um, well except for one little thing you're going to flip over two cards to represent your right and left um, friends and then actually I, I forgot if you decide to use these cards uh, normally you'd be giving that resource to another player instead in this version of the game you are not giving it to another player you are um, gonna spawn more enemies at the end of the round with these uh, with these cards and so let's talk about that basically it's a game with a lot of little different meeples you got civilians yellow servants purple soldiers uh, black builders light blue and resources gray so it comes with these cubes it also comes with these player decks here and these uh uh i'm sorry so all these player decks are the same they have 12 cards in them they're just different colors but they're basically the exact same cards regardless of which color you choose and then there's these cards here which are the fate cards hold on let me look that up i do have the rules here yes fate cards so this is a fate deck and that's going to be used for quite a few things in the game we will talk about that as we go through it um well i can go over a fate card really quickly i guess before i get too far into this i should say that we did get a review copy of this game sent to us by renegade so uh i had to look to see who the publisher was <laughs> renegade did send us a review copy although obviously i'm playing it on tabletop simulator today um, so what is this card going to tell us? Well, it's going to tell us several different things. And actually, I'll just use this card as my first card. First of all, it's going to tell me what um, meeples that I'm going to take at the beginning of the game. So it tells me to take two soldiers. So I'll go ahead and grab two soldiers. It tells me to take two builders here. So I will go ahead and take two builders. It tells me to take three servants. So I will take those three servants. And it tells me to take one civilian. So I will take that. So this is the first randomizer piece of information. At the beginning of every round, we're going to flip over a card and draw those meeples from the bag. That is a uh, part of the flip and fill stuff. The other thing on the top here is we're going to get attacked at the end of every round. Remember, I was pointing out these numbers here. This is exactly how many cards you're going to draw at the end of the round. And it tells you basically if it's going to attack middle, left or right. That's it. And then, so depending on where you have your defenses set up is going to determine whether you can defend against that attack or not. 
There's only two other pieces of information on this card. This is a resource that you could trade in with, uh, like far away places for one of the spots on the board over here, the market. Um, <laughs> that is that gives you that number. And then this is the strength of the gladiators if you want to fight against them, which is this little section over here. That is the one section that that is used for you. So you flip over a card to determine like a random good that you can buy and or a random strength for your gladiator. We have uh, Jan saying, uh, hi, Peter. Happy walling. Yes, this is uh, this is definitely my first time playing this on stream. I have played it a few other times. So if you catch me doing something incorrectly or if I'm missing something, let me know. The hardest part for me about this game, it's pretty straightforward. Usually you're just gonna be filling in boxes like here, foresting and mining. I turn in a purple worker to fill in one box here. That's it. If I turn in another worker, I fill in this box, which gives me a hammer down here. And it gives me a stone, which again is one of the resources you can get at the beginning of the game. So usually it's pretty straightforward. There's some intricacies here a little bit, but then when you get on this side, for the most part, again, it's straightforward. Like here, you turn in this to get this, you turn in this to get this. Now you do have to be on certain places on the track to be able to do that. But you, you go small, medium, then large precinct. That makes sense. But over here at the market, you could fill in any one you want in any order as long as you filled this in. This track, you can go in any order as well. This one, you're going left to right, but I don't know what happens when you're like, Gladiator dies. Can you keep filling in that gladiator? I don't think so. Add more strength later. I think they're just done, done. So there are some places like, again, small has to be built before large over here, but temple, small, medium, large, you do have to do it in order. So those have to be in order, but then you're talking over here, they could be done in any order, which I guess if you have extra resources, you might want to do them out of order. I, I don't know. Like, that's the thing that I have to look up kind of every time is the order. Most of the time it doesn't matter. Like this one can be in any order, which is kind of good because you get different benefits from this track. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Um, so let's start from the beginning. All right. So the first thing you're going to see at the top of this board here is the defensive track that you have here. So again, at the end of the round, you're going to flip over a number of cards equal to this here. And as long as you have def defense there, then you can defend it. So again, I'm going to be marking these as I fill in. You'll see this little shield here. You'll notice there are shields throughout these tracks here. Whenever I cover up one of those shields, I get to decide where I want to cover up on this top track. And that provides me defense in that specific area. Um if I get attacked. So um, so that's all that is. So I don't fill those in except when I get these shield symbols here. So let's talk about the top here. Mining and foresting is pretty straightforward. You turn in one of these purple meeples, which are, I forget the name of them, servants. You turn in a servant to fill in a box. When you fill in this box, you then come down here and you notice this little hammer here. Then you are gonna fill in this. This game is very much do this to do that, to do the next, to do the other thing. There's a lot of interplay here it's one of it's probably the greatest part of the game is how much you're like getting to do on a turn it looks like you're like oh i only have a certain number of meeples here those meeples go a very long way so i can turn in here you want to get these hammers early because if you notice these hammers every turn you are going to produce a resource based on what you have as far as hammers here so uh so the more of these hammers you fill in the, the more you're going to get to do. All right, so let's go down to the next thing, which is war, uh, guards. You were, or the wall slash guards, you were going to turn in a soldier to move up one space on here. And this little, we already know what the shield does. Let's look at this little blue thing. These are your victory point tracks. So this is the whole point of the game, is moving up these tracks here. Every spot on here, you're going to add up at the end of the game. They're going to be worth one victory point. You have four tracks that you're basically moving down. They will give you workers as you move down the tracks, things like that. When you get to the 15 spot here, that lets you build these landmarks. If you have, you know, use the appropriate resources to build them, um, you will get them, which will usually move you up on a different track. So they can kind of chain together to move you up all these tracks. Um, so again, the further you move up the tracks, the more victory points you're going to get. That is the major source or one of the major sources of victory points. The other one are the path cards, which we'll talk about in the middle, uh, in a middle, in a minute, uh, you're going to get one each turn, which is going to give you an end game scoring goal. And you'll get six of those throughout the course of the game. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a middle. 
in a middle, again, in a middle, <laughs> in a minute, you will lose victory points every time they break through. So if they are attacking a section of your wall where you do not have defended and you have no way to deal with it, you are going to circle that space down here and that's going to lead to disdain. And what we'll do in this situation is put one of these circle rings around it. And uh, at the end of the game, if you have not filled in these spaces, so you, there is a way to put make it filled in later. For every one you don't have filled in, that's going to be your total disdain. And then you just look here. If I have four disdain, that's negative seven victory points at the end of the game. So that is how that scoring is going to work. So it's going to be add up the total number of spaces you moved up all these tracks followed by your path cards minus your disdain and that is going to be your score for the game and it's really as you'll see it's pretty straightforward it looks like a lot but it's not as complicated as it looks at first it's both more and less complicated than it looks at first all right so that's the wall guard track there's a sword here why is there a sword here over here you'll see you can turn in one of these blue dudes which are builders one, uh, to give you a sword action. The sword, all it does is come over here. Now, why are there numbers here? The reason there are numbers here is you can only do this once per round. So we're going to use dice in this situation, but on the sheet, you would just mark it. And whatever round you used it in, you just mark it with a number. So you know you cannot do that action again this round. And you'll notice any place there are numbers, that is the case, max one per year. Um, max one battle for each gladiator per year. So again, you could put the, the round number here. So it just tells you that whenever there's a number that that's limit once per year. So again, the guard, you're going to turn in a soldier or turn in a builder to turn the builder. Now I'm curious what this is. Okay. I don't know why you'd want to do that. And I changed it and now I can't get it back. What am I doing? <laughs> See, that's what I get for playing in the middle of the game. Uh, it's locked it in and I don't know why. And now I'm not happy about any of it. Poor life choices. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, that moves you down that track. And then so you could spend a stone to move down this track, which doesn't seem to do a whole lot till you get over here, which gives you shields. And there are some restrictions on all of these tracks. I will go over in one second. But I'm going to keep going down. Wall, same thing. You spend a stone and you move up on this track. Uh, you'll see you can get either more workers, civilians in this situation, or move you up this yellow track down here, which is, again, the renowned track, which leads to winning at the end of the game. It also gives you shield over here. So these are kind of your defense spaces over here. Now, you do need to add to your fort as well, and you're going to do that with either builders or soldiers over here. Uh, and when you do that, you're going to move down here and you'll notice there's a little flags here. This tells you that you are allowed to do something. So in spot one here, whenever there's a flag, it's telling you somewhere else on one of these giant boards, something else is going to happen. Thankfully, most of these tend to be in the same area. They're pretty good about doing that. So here, if I go to the one spot here, it doesn't give me anything right away, but what it does is it lets me build the medium granary. And we will talk about what that does. But basically, when I build the medium granary, I'm going to put a spot on there and uh, mark that I have built it, which means that I can use this middle section of the board. You'll notice that there are different sections. So I start with a small granary. I can fill in any of these spots over here. But I can't fill in anything on the middle till I build the medium granary. And then large granary, it's not only going to mark off the spot saying I have it, but it's also going to give me one of these renown as well on this renown track at the top. So, it, again, it tells you what you need to pay here. So it's all very straightforward. The gameplay is fairly straightforward here. It's just like turning these things to get these things. The other thing over here, though, that limits you moving down this track, you see these chains here. Until I build these spots underneath these chains, I cannot build in the wall or kippy. I'm going to say kippy. It's probably not right. Sippy? Sippy. I think sippy sounds better. <laughs> uh so basically, you cannot build in either of these till you build the thing below it as well. So until I build my fort, I cannot basically supply the wall or the sippy, so I can't go above it. So there's two restrictions when you're building down these rows at the top here. Number one is what size granary do you have? You cannot go past this line in any of these four rows until you have built a the medium granary, and then again, the large granary, uh, and then also you cannot build on the sippy or the wall until you've built fort spaces far enough to enable you to do that. Wall guard doesn't matter. Mining force thing doesn't matter. That just needs granaries. 
All right, so you'll notice there are other numbers here, not just the one and the five. So what do those trigger? Those trigger these, which are income bonuses. So we already talked about if you get a hammer, that's income bonus for stone each year, which is awesome. But if you get to level two here, you then can turn in these two workers and a stone to not only get a yellow civilian right away, but every year you're going to get a civilian in addition to that, which seems pretty good. And then if you get to three over here, you can build this with stone. You can build this workshop over here, small workshop, and you not only will get one of those builders right away, but every turn you'll get a builder. Over here, you get to move down one of these two tracks once per year, or, or immediately you get to go through one. That's why there's a slash. And then every year you get to go up the track of your choice each year. Again, really good bonuses for moving up this fort track here. So these are kind of like your income bonuses over here. We talked about that's what gives you, oh no, we didn't. Here you could spend any two workers to turn into any other worker, just can't be a soldier, uh, max one per year. So that's why you can mark that. The statues we talked about, if you get to the 15 victory point place here, you can build the statues. So that is literally the whole left sheet. So it's your scoring, it's your income each turn, it's your defending your wall. That's all on the left side. All pretty straightforward. Right sheet, not so much. Uh, Jan says, what's the difference between big and small workshops? Same icon. Let's see. Large and small workshop. So yeah. Um, so the difference is you have to be higher up on the track. You're going to always build the small one first. You have to build the small everything first before you build the large one, but it'll give you a second free worker each year. So it's per circle filled in. You're going to be getting this every year. So you get one. If you just do the top one, then you get another one later in the game because you know, obviously you got to move all the way down to seven over here. So it's going to be later in the game. If you can fill both of these in, you'll get even more workers. So this is definitely an engine building game where as the game goes on, you're going to have more and more resources, more and more workers. You're going to get more and more income, the victory point income, which also will potentially provide you with workers as well at the end of the round. So really you're moving down uh, here to, to really get your income engine going. Uh, cool. All right. So the right side, the right sheet is where there is a lot of complication and all these little mini games are kind of done differently. So I'm not going to necessarily cover all of them in great detail, but there are some things that they have in common. Number one, you want to go down these tracks just to get the workers, first of all. So let's talk about that. So to come down these tracks, you either need a yellow civilian or you need this bag here. Well, where do you get those bags? Again, you look over here. This is going to give you a bag. You look. This is going to give you a bag when you build there. Some of the other things may... Anytime you see a bag that are full of coins like that, honestly, I don't know all the spaces uh, or I would be more useful, but you are going to go down that track. Um, so anytime you see a bag or anytime you spend a yellow worker, you can move one space down this track, which again will immediately get you a purple worker, which I'm sorry, I don't know the names for all these. They're servants for purple, civilians for yellow. Honestly, uh, for me, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I hate to say it. Uh, the theme here is, is very loose, but that's okay. But when you look at this, usually this civilian over here or this track over here is associated with these tracks over here so you'll notice when i get to the three spot i can now build a small precinct precincts are really good because they move you up not only two track or one track but give you income every turn and give you a stone so i like to get this early i love getting extra stone income early medium precinct same thing large precinct same thing it's going to give you another hammer it's going to give you stone right away and it's going to move you up one of those victory tracks right away um, and then the market here, uh, yes. So Jan says, can you get bags in the market too? No. <laughs> so uh, that's, yeah, I guess that's a little confusing. So this is basically saying three on the bag track is where you, or the trader track, I guess it's called three on the trader track. So it's, it's kind of telling you where you need to be on which track. So here it's, theater track but it's really the performer track that lets you get this so this is saying three and it's correlating it to this track here so no you don't get a bag but when you're at three here you turn in these two workers and you get whatever's in the box next to it so that's uh that's why those bags are on there good question though so here the market is super confusing 
Uh, I find it very confusing, but you can either buy from here. And when you buy from here, you don't get this four here. You actually flip a card and it's gonna be a random number one to six. The higher numbers are more rare than lower numbers or every turn you're also gonna be able to buy from your neighbors. So this is what our cards are gonna look like, but I'll tell you what we can do from our neighbors. From our neighbors, we can basically do this. So I can buy a two good from my neighbor. To do that, first of all, I had to unlock the market. So not only do I have to get to the four space here, but then I gotta pay these workers to fill in this space, which does then give me one of these, which lets me move down the renown track, right? So it does all those, but it also unlocks this. Now for one stone, if I'm at least on the four spot here or the five spot, and again, you could do these in any order. So you may wanna do some of these first if you're all the way down the renown track because you get workers for them in addition to putting goods in. Now there are only six numbered goods and you can only have six different ones. So why are there more than six spaces? Well, sometimes you're gonna buy these and pay for them. So to get them, you have to pay a stone uh, to get a good. Now, if you're buying from your neighbor, you know exactly what you're getting. You do need to put the stone on their card. Normally, again, you'd be giving that resource to them to be able to use their stone over here. Uh, or I'm sorry, not their stone, but to be able to use their good over here. I'd write a two in on one of the spaces, whichever one I am up to. I'm allowed to do anything below. And then as soon as we do it, first, second, and third time, that are different numbers, that's why I say not equal, you get one renown. If you get a fourth and a fifth different number, you get two renown. If you go six time, you get three renown, if you can get all six different numbers. So you can buy from your neighbors. Now, again, if you do this in the solo game, at the end of the game, not only will I be drawing one, but I'll be drawing a second one for each resource that is basically on one of these things. Whether that's a resource cube or a meeple, you'll see down here, we will be sending meeples to our neighbors to fill in this like polyomino board here. Like you can take shapes from your neighbors as well or from yourself. That's why there's a little arrow there. For the goods, it's only your neighbors you'll see over here. So this is in solo, really, that's why we're flipping these two cards to simulate neighbors. Um, it is for the goods and uh, stuff. So I'm gonna go much more quickly down performer track. So performers, you can go up the track. You have to build the building, which I forgot my first game, before you can do any of this stuff. But then for one stone, once per year, you can get whatever is here. So you can go up on the bag track. You can get this. Again, you have to have a certain level to get different things. But it's all one stone. You can do it once a year to move up on different tracks usually or move up on tracks and get workers. That's that. Gladiator is kind of cool. You spend either of these uh, workers to train either of your gladiators to fight, you basically just flip over one of these cards and you look and that's how much damage your gladiator takes. So you'll circle these to fill in the gladiator strength and then you'll flip a card to see how much damage they take as long as you survive um, based on, so if you survive, you look over here and you get these as rewards if you've survived. If you failed, you get this as a reward based on wherever it is. So if I've only filled in one circle, my gladiator dies right away, this is the reward I get. If I have two circles filled in and I only took one damage, then I survive that and I will get this reward on the bottom. And then I can keep fighting with that gladiator round after round as well. So again, only once per round though, it doesn't cost anything to do the fighting, but to level up your gladiator will cost stuff. All right, this track down here lets me get gardens. Uh, which moves you up on a bunch of different tracks, it lets you get the large gardens when you get to seven, it lets you move up on even more tracks. Uh, you can also do temples. Temples have a new symbol. Uh, so uh, first of all, a white worker means a worker of any color. Uh, so you could trade in anything to move here. This does have two spaces. One of them moves me up on a track. The other one, I circle this, and this lets me ignore one of the attack cards at the end of the round. So again, first round, I'm only drawing one, so I could ignore the one. Second round in a yellow medium game, normal game, which is what we're playing, I will be able to ignore one of the two if I want to. Um, you get to look at them first and then decide which ones you're gonna ignore. So that's actually a very powerful action, being able to ignore them, but first one's easy to get. Second one, I gotta not only build the temple, but then build one, two, three, four, five, six times, six different workers to get down here and be level six on this track as well. Not as easy. Um, uh, so Jan says, do we need to know all about these things before you play? Uh, Thomas says, of course we do. How else will we be able to call out Peter when he cheats? You are correct, Jan. You don't need to know all these things the first time you play. I wasn't planning on going over this, but I just realized I'm probably not going to use all these. 
So that's why I wanted to quickly go over it. Uh, is the game fun once you've learned it? Well, I will go over that in my impressions at the end. But you know me, I don't play games I don't have fun with. So <laughs> if, if unless it was my first time playing, then you would know that uh, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. But no, no, no. I uh, don't play games unless I have fun. All right. So moving down here, bats. We'll go over it quickly. This lets you get a check mark, which lets you fill in those disdain spots. So if you take a bath, your people are just happy again. Um, so again, uh, two bribes per year. They cost a stone each. It's a pretty good late game thing to do to fill in some of those disdain circles. Uh, if you get the courthouse over here, it lets you get these things, which, oh, yeah, you just put a, uh, a thing here, uh, a, a number dice, one ruling column per year. You know, I've never done this track, so I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I think you just get the worker over here. I will actually have to work. Oh, yeah, yeah. So here you get a purple. I have done this before. Here you just get a purple. Again, you can do one per column per year. So I can get one purple free per year, which is freaking outstanding. Here I spend a blue to get two purples. Again, once per year. Again, but I also have to meet these requirements. Here I spend a purple to get a blue. Again, once per year, but I can do this. I can get a purple from here, spend it over here to just get a blue. Awesome. All right, last thing. Last track to go down. This Diplomat track lets you, again, remove cards, but only from, you have to determine ahead of time whether it's gonna be left, center, or right. So who are you friends with? Which side? Is it gonna be the right, the center, or the left? You can, you'll circle these, and then later off on you can cross them off to prevent attacks, but to those very specific areas, not to anywhere. This one is the last thing I'll cover. It's the polyomino thing we are talking about. You wanna fill in here. You get a black, um, one of these, what are they called? Valor for every full uh, row you've completed. So left to right row you completed, you get these things when you cover them up. Um, and you are going to be spending, so this is how this works. You don't have to build a building first with it for the, any of this bottom stuff, which is kind of nice. You need to be level two. You spend one soldier to mark in a horse, which lets you basically grab a polyomino if you grab it from a neighbor you are going to give them your soldier if you take it from your own card because you notice these have not only side arrows but a down arrow you will um discard it to the bank if you use your own card to fill in this polyomino puzzle at the bottom that is everything that is it we are done all right so let's get to playing uh all right so the first thing we do on our turn and actually should be it turn order somewhere it's not on the back on the back they have this handy dandy little thing um but basically first thing we do is we're going to flip over this card draw our uh stuff second thing we do is flip over two of these cards in the multiplayer game you'd keep them secret put them face down one face down here which is going to be your end game scoring card one over here which you are going to get the resources on the bottom of your own plus you will have availability to buy that good as well all right so let's look at this merchant card here um do 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 oh no you can't buy your own resource that's right you can only use your own uh, polyamino thing all right so collected goods so for four collected goods you get one victory point six you get two uh three you get eight or i mean eight you get three so collected goods is this market up here i believe so yes so i don't really do that track very often but maybe i will so completed citizen tracks so uh what is it one three or five or no, two, four, and five. So these are the citizens, one, two, three, four, five, depending. I actually like doing that, but let's see which resources. Actually, I don't have any stone at the beginning. I don't have many civilians, so I actually don't mind doing this. All right, so this is gonna go over here. This is gonna come over here. So this is now an end game scoring condition for me. It also tracks my round. We are in round one, cause that is there. And then I get a civilian and a resource, cause I didn't use that card. Boom, boom, done. So that's how every player is going to be a little different. Also, don't forget to collect your income. Resource production, you get a stone. Boom. Done. All right. Let's start moving down some tracks, shall we? All right. So do I want to do one on each to basically de guarantee myself defense? Uh, let's see. I can get two of them here going down this track. So let's start doing that. Uh, I'm going to spend one soldier to move one space down this track, which fills in one of those, which lets me go left, center, or right. 
This one is center, so I probably don't want to fill in center because there's one less center card in there. I mean, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, but we'll defend left first. Okay, then I am going to spend another one, another soldier, to move down another space on this track, which gives me a blue thingy, which is down here. Boom, down that track. All right, then I'm going to spend a builder to go over here and say round one. I use my training grounds to train it. Gives me a sword icon, which lets me go over here. Boom. So I am down here. I got another shield. We will put that on our right cohort. So we are now a little bit defended from left or right. Center is the only thing that we get through on the first round. Again, I didn't need anything on the bottom for that. All right, now let's talk about the wall, shall we? We'll go ahead and use this builder to build a spot on the wall. Badink, badink, badink. So you can see it go. I mean, the gameplay is faster than my explanation. Oh, I can't do that. I'm sorry. To build on the fort. So now I filled in that first spot. So now I can build on the wall and I will go ahead and use one resource to build one spot on the wall. I can also build in this sippy right here, but there's no reason to. It doesn't give me any benefits. I'm really going to try to potentially go down here and well, it's going to be a while before I'm going to get benefits from defense. I guess I'd have to go all the way down to here and then I could get this on the sippy or I could try to move three more spots down the wall, which will be not easy. But anyway, all right, I've done what I'm done there. Let's see where we want to go next. All right, so now purple is good for moving up the mining track. So we will definitely do that one, two to move two spots up the mining track. So that lets me go one, two, which gives me a hammer and it immediately gives me a stone. So let's go ahead and get that stone resource back and let's go ahead and mark that hammer spot. So next turn, not only will I get one resource, but I will get two free resources at the end of the turn. I would like to go to here so I can fill this in so I get a free yellow worker at the beginning of my next turn too. Although you'll see right now I don't have any blue workers, but that is a technicality. Uh, yes. Well, it's more than a technicality because I need to move pretty far down there. All right. Well, maybe I try to move down this track so I can get some stone income every turn. So let's go ahead and use one yellow worker to move down one on this citizen track over here, which gets me a purple worker right away. See, I can get blue workers. I'm not that worried about that if, but that would cost me two more spaces. So I'd need two blue workers. So I need another one. And then I'd need another blue worker for that, which seems like a lot to ask. I have a purple and a yellow right now. If I can get to the third spot here, although again, I need more yellow workers. Yes. And then unless I go down here, ah, so here I can get another yellow worker if I had an, enough blue workers, which I don't. I want purple workers, which I don't know why. No, I don't know why. Uh, and then I need a blue worker and a stone to open up this. So probably want to do that. And then if I had enough purple workers, I could get even further down here, which I don't. Again, which mistakes have been made clearly um, already. Yeah, I was worried too much about defense maybe early on. That's all right. Let's keep going. I'm going to use this yellow worker here to go down... Oh, if I go down one here, it'll give me a bag, which will let me move up here. All right, so let's do that. All right, so I'm going to go down this track. It should give me a blue worker, right? So I got the blue worker here. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of do this to do that to do the other. And I can do one performance per year. Well, for one stone, I can do this, which will move me on the bag track. So let's spend the one stone. Oh, this, I do have to mark the round number because, again, it's max one performance per year so this is round one I did this I get a bag which fills in this track over here so now for one more yellow worker I could get this but I don't have a yellow worker so that seems to be a problem in and of its own right uh, I do have blue which will get me down here I do have this oh I do have enough to build the granary all right so let's do that here's a purple here's a blue here's a stone to move me and I get the granary which does me no good right now but Considering that I have a bunch of purple, it would get me down this track to potentially get more income. 
yeah, I needed just one more worker here, one more way to get workers. You all probably see a hundred ways that I could do that. I am not that smart. Uh, so let's use my last purple worker to go ahead and move up the mining and forcing track. Again, I can keep going now because I did build my granary. And boom, that is one turn. That is one sixth of the game. Now, not every turn is as fast as the others, as we know with games like this, especially engine building games. But let me see if there were any comments, any questions, any people telling me how stupid I am for going the wrong places. And we will go from there. So yes, while this explanation was long, as you see, the gameplay is not that long and not that complicated, especially early. Uh, it definitely builds as you get more actions. All right, that's just not going in there. All right, so Thomas says, I just got home from work, so I'll probably be able to pay super close attention. I probably won't be able to pay super close attention. Jan said he was running out of energy. Well, don't worry. I will put in timestamps for when gameplay starts for the rest of you. But unfortunately for the live audience, you didn't get that. Uh, <laughs> all right, but that is the end of round one. So the last thing we do is they are going to attack me. So we look at the bottom here to see where uh, how many cards we draw. It is, again, we're playing normal difficulty. That's yellow. So that is one card. And they attack in the middle, of course. The only place I didn't defend, which is, uh, that's a shame. All right. So normally I would get points up the, uh, which track is it? The Valor track if I had defended. But since I didn't defend, and it reminds you that right here, if you defend, you get Valor. If not... You get disdain. My people are not happy. Obviously, they were coming up the middle. Why would you not have defended that? Says everybody ever. And I, my answer is I don't know. I, I, I did not do it. I did not defend you properly. And I apologize for that. All right. So next turn, we're going to be drawing two cards to see um, where they'll be attacking. All right. So let's go ahead and start round two of Hadrian's Wall. All right. So we'll look at our workers. We're going to just get one soldier. We're going to get two of these builders. Uh, you know what? I'm deleting you, builder. I don't like you. You wouldn't go back in the bag. Go back to your home. All right. We'll get three of these. We'll get one of these. And we'll get one stone. And then we will see which of these two we are going to use for endgame scoring and which we're going to get a resource. So either way, we will get one soldier from these cards. So let's look. Fighter. Completed cohorts. So that would be these completed uh, at the end of the game or completed scout Columns. Which ones are scout columns? Ah, scouting's here. Oh, columns. Up and down. So do I want to focus on scouting this game or do I want to focus on uh, defending myself this game? I'm going to defend myself so I don't look like a fool anymore since I've already not defended myself on turn one. And then again, you complete one whole one. You get one victory point, two gets two, and three gets three. All right, I put this over here. I look over here and I get that extra worker for this turn and this turn only. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let me get a sip of water. Ugh. Any more questions, go ahead and fill. Uh, let me know. And otherwise, I'm just going to keep going. Thomas says, keep the middle open and use it as gates to send a few hundred Spartans to hold the pass. It'll be fine, I promise. All right, so we're keeping the middle open the rest of the game. No, definitely not going to do that. All right. <laughs> Good idea. Good thought, in theory. Uh, all right. So we're going to add... I don't have enough words. I, I need to move up this track, really, because that was a problem. Like, oh, I do get two stone. So, ah, don't forget that. Don't forget those resources. So I do get two additional stone as well. So I definitely want to move up this track. I want to focus on that this turn. Certainly, I'd like to get at least two more mining. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go one, two, purple, to go one, two spaces here, which gives me another hammer, and a stone. So the hammer will get me more stone income next turn. The stone will give me a stone for now, which will let me put on a performance as long as I move up this track even a little bit. Okay. So, let's see. I do want to move up this track quite a bit this turn, as much as I can, in fact. So, I'm going to start by spending one, two builders to start working on that fort. So, that's one, two. This two allows me to do this. I need another builder, so let's use my yellow to go down 
any of these tracks that give me builders. I guess the arts one is the only one that really gives me a builder. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will get a builder. I don't seem to have nearly as many things here as I want this game for some reason. All right, so I'm gonna build a small hostel here. I'm sorry, it's a hotel, not a hostel. Uh, we're gonna spend one and two and a stone to do that. Uh, and that gets me a yellow worker right away. But ink. And now I will be getting a yellow, an extra additional yellow worker every round for income. Cool, that I do like. And I need to be two for that. If I can get to three, oh, up here I can get another yellow worker as well. Uh, so I can do that with one of these. So let's keep going down that track, shall we? Um, let's do that, and we will get our yellow worker here. I like that. That makes me happy, and it moves me down. So now these stone are going to get me some stuff. So one, two, three stone to get to there. I mean, that seems like kind of a no-brainer. One, two, three stone gets me... One, two gets me another yellow worker. All right, things are starting to come together. And three gets me one on this yellow victory track and a defense. We're putting it in the middle. Not listening to any bad defensive uh, <laughs> advice over here. Uh, We're going to defend on all fronts because that's what we do. That's what we do. All right, so I got some yellow workers. I also have one of these. I don't have stone, though. Um, three stone would be nice to, oh no, I'm not even down this track nearly enough for that. If I get this, then three stone would also get me a blue worker now and for the rest of the game. Can I get three stone anywhere? That is the question. If I go here, so I'd have to go here to be able to go here. Oh, I never built this building. So I already cheated on turn one. I could not have done what I did. So I could not put this here because I never built this building here. So, yeah, that's why I told you guys to keep check on me because I'm a cheater and McCheaterson. Well, thankfully, moving to this two spot didn't get me anything. But, yes, I could not do that because I never built the building. That is the key here. So for two and one, did I not build that building? I feel like I did. Did I get the renown from it? I feel like I did build that building. No, that's from there. Eh, I guess I never built the building. We are all now dumber for seeing that. Um, why would I have thought I could build there? I guess because I, I went up here. Yeah, yeah, mistakes were made. Yeah, I can't do gladiators till I build that building. Yeah, that's something. Didn't I even say I forgot to do that my first game, and then I just forgot to do it again? All right, I would like a purple so I can fill this in, but I got to get two spaces up here. So let's go one, two to come up this track. One, two, which gives me a builder. So I got that going for me. So now I do need a purple and a yellow. I use my purple, so can I use my blue to get a yellow anywhere? No. My soldier would get me up this track, which is down here, which is not helping me right now. Uh, I'd like to get this income. I need three stone for that. That's not going to happen. I'd love to get more stone income. That's not going to happen. So blue can move me down this track if I use my blue and my black. Ah, here we go. So there's one two to go down this track twice the first one will get me nothing except unlocking this which is good second one will get me another civilian now i have two of them can any of them get me purple yes over here all right so i'm using this to get this purple by filling in this spot over here which, again, I want to fill up all these tracks anyway. That is one of my goals. And honestly, I want to fill this one up early because this helps me move down other tracks. Before I fill them up, I'd rather get them for free. So I want to start moving up that. But now I have a purple and a yellow. Purple and a yellow lets me do this. And I don't have to build a building first, so I'm not cheating this time. So one, two lets me fill in this. It gets me a laurel wreath type thingy. 
which is one of these victory tracks, right? Yep. It's the Piety track. And it also gets me, where am I? Uh, a hammer and a stone. I'm not going to cover it all up. Just going to cover up the hammer. Save everybody some time. That does get me extra stone income next turn or resource income. I do have another stone right here, which I can use to get a yellow worker. So let's go ahead and do that. Fill in this spot here to get a worker back. <laughs> Which will, in turn, let me, oopsie, not want to move everything. Which will let me, do do do, move down one of these tracks. Let's see, let's go ahead and do this one. That'll get me a stone or a resource, whatever they're called. And with this, I can move down one of these two tracks. Uh, I'll get here so I'm one away from getting more defense. Although right now I'm spread. I got one on each. So hopefully that will be enough to defend this second turn. And that is two turns of Hadrian's Wall. All right. So, and if you're playing multiplayer, you're just doing all of this simultaneously with the other players as they are moving on their board. So it is very multiplayer solitaire, but, um... I do think in a very fun way because of how quick it goes. Uh, now, I assume that if you're waiting for somebody, it's not going to be that fun. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully you don't have slow players in your group. But I, I do think it's fun um, solo. Kind of getting into my final impressions here. All right. So let's go ahead. We are now to the end of the round. Let's go ahead and get attacked. So we are in round two. Look under the yellow. That means we are drawing two cards. So we are getting attacked left once and right once. So we block both of those. Awesome. That means we are getting two on this renowned track over here. So let's draw two of these. And we are, are a Valor track. I am sorry. That is the Valor track we go up every time we successfully defend. Now, if we defended one of those, then we'd get one point in Valor. And we would get one point in Disdain. So it's the difference between how many times you defend and... Um, and how many um so in this situation because we had one on each if they'd both been in the same area we would have defended one of the two so we would have gotten one valor and then one would have gotten through so we would have gotten one disdain that's how that works all righty well that is two rounds in the books let's go to round three and we are going to see what meeples we got i'm not going to do this right now i'm just going to have it as a reference and then i will grab these in a second after I look at my two cards, so I can put one under the board and we don't have any issues. Uh, so I'm light right now. Blue and yellow would be really good. I'm kind of light, but stone is always good too. Although I got a lot of stone income from uh, down here. Uh, I also do have an extra yellow worker from down here as well. So I'm kind of leaning toward ke keeping this for the resource, but let's see. Forager, resource production. So resource is the stone production, which I'm already up. Uh, so I'm up four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four of the nine. Well, I'm already kind of being a forager. I only need two more to get to six. So in two ways, this card is way better for me. So let's put that under and we will get the resources from this card. All right, let's get all our resources. So we got a civilian from there. We got two, or I'm sorry, a soldier, two of these. We get one, two of these. We get one of these. We get one, two resources. From this card, we get a yellow and we get a blue. And from down here, we get a yellow, one per year. So let's get our yellow worker. And we get four stone. Boom, boom, boom. One, two. Yeah, so as you can see, the engine building picks up and up and up. We are on round three, so we are going to need to defend four this round. Um, and again, it's right under the card you played, so you can always tell what round you're in. Uh, very, There's a lot of clever design stuff in this that makes me happy as a designer um, to be doing it. Now, order matters, but I'm not smart enough to figure out why or how it matters. So I'm going to do things probably not in the right order. I'm going to go ahead and do this first. I'm going to pay my three stone to get that since I've already unlocked it. This is like a dexterity game now, too. All right, so three stone. 
lets me unlock this because I'm already at the three or past the three. Um, so I get a blue worker right away and now every turn I will be getting a builder as well, which is good because that's gonna help me get down this track faster. I've already built a granary so I can really fly down this track now. I definitely wanna build at least one spot here. That is for darn sure. So let's go ahead and put this here, which also lets me come up this discipline track down here. One more spot on the discipline track will also get me uh, a blue worker, which seems good. I do want to kind of build some of this stuff, but actually let's get some defense first. So four stone, I don't have four stone. Is there a way to get stone? The biggest way to get stone I think is down here. Um which costs you soldiers and getting down this scouting track here. So, um, there's not really a great, like I'd kind of want a flat one this turn. It's not really a great flat one. Although if I do this, I can fill in this space here and get a purple and all right, let's do that. So we're gonna use a yellow to move down this track one space. Then, because I'm in the two space, I can go ahead and do this. And you can use as many of these as you want uh, as far down as you are. One more spot does get me another soldier too. So, you know what? I'm gonna do another yellow to get another soldier. I'm gonna use one of those soldiers to do my own track here. Now, if I'd done one of these, I'd put him on this and then later in the game when we're drawing enemies in the solo game you draw out an extra enemy in a two-player game you do have one of these ai cards and if anybody puts it on there it's one extra for everybody per card so two-player game can get a little vicious with you messing with each other but you are allowed to build off your own so i'm going to do that and i build that little t-shape there so i'm going to go one which gives me a stone two three and four in my little polyomino game. So I get a purple worker and a stone. Purple and a stone. I don't even remember why I was trying to do that anymore. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Uh, all right, I'd like to get down here. Although I don't have the two yellow and a purple to get the, the stone production every turn. Let's see, do I have purple to go down here? One, two, three, yes I do. So I'm gonna do that. One, two, three purple workers to move down. One, I guess I should just copy and paste this. So I get a stone immediately and I get a hammer for the rest of the game. Wow, that's gonna make things much faster, just pasting that. Uh, <laughs> yes, all right, so let's go down this track. I'm gonna use two blue workers to move two spots down this track. The first spot gets me a yellow worker. The second one unlocks this ability here. Uh, what did the first one get me? A yellow worker, I believe. I believe, I believe, yes. All right, so let's get a yellow worker back. All right, so can I get this income? I'd love to, two purples and a blue and a stone. I don't have any purples and I need two. That seems like a problem. <laughs> Uh, if I go two spaces here, that'll let me get there. So let's, do I want to do that? I kind of do. But I kind of want to get to six on here, which would cost three. Yeah, I'm not doing that this turn, although it doesn't mean I shouldn't do it. Uh, and then I need to build this building. I need a purple. All right, I'm just going to go with my gut here. I'm going to go one, two, to go two, you know what? No, no, no. I want this track. I need to get to four so I can build a granary. So I'm going to go here. Boom, boom. So I do get one purple worker. So I got a purple, a blue. Usually that combination lets you do... Combination? <laughs> Usually that combination lets you do something. Although this stone really is good for me here. So let's do one, two, three stone. That gets me down to two, which is also usually a good number. Uh, so one lets me build defenses. All right. I don't want to look through here. There's a lot of rights. There's a left. There's another right center. All right, I'm building left. Haven't seen a lot of lefts. Let's build left defense. We'll do this to get a point on the renowned track. And then the third one we spent 
also going to move us down here. Now we're out of our chain range as well, so to get more I need to, to do more. But there I get a yellow worker. All right, so I got one of every color here. Got the rainbow. Now remember I said I want to get to four. So let me build this, and I can do that this turn, so I'm doing that. All right, I'm going to spend my yellow to move one down this track, which gives me this, which gets me another yellow worker. Sweet. Then I want to do this. Where is it? This. So to build the small gardens, I need a purple, a blue, and a stone. There's a blue. There's a purple. There's a stone. Which gets me this. All right. So first I go on the money. Well, let's do it in order. Wreath track. Piety. Then I also get the bag track, which is this one. I also get this track, the theater track, and his own track, which gets me a priest. So I got a priest there, and I think that was it. So priest is this. They're not really called priests, and then I should mark this as complete. All right. So now I need to get my gardens to seven and then I'll be able to get this, which is up a lot of different tracks. I do have two on here, which doesn't let me start building here yet. Um, all right, if I can get a blue worker, I can build the theater, which would let me start using my stone for other stuff. Um, but I could just start moving down this track as well. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I mean, this would be great if I could get another yellow. Is Oh, oh, I can get another yellow. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to spend this soldier to move me here down this track, which gets me another yellow. Now I have two yellow. It was all yellow. Two yellow and a purple. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, please, and thank you. Uh, so, I go up uh, this track one. That's got to be down here, Oop, which gets me a blue worker. All right. So, I think you could see from just this turn whether you're going to like this game or not. Just the amount of combo-licious stuff. Uh, I get a stone and a hammer. So, put the hammer here. We'll get the stone here. So, I get a blue and two stone Huh. I'd love to be able to build this. I need a purple. Can a stone get me a purple is the question. I'm guessing the amper, am, amper? I'm guessing the emperor is no. If I can get some piety or piety, sorry, I keep calling it piety. Oh, I can if I can move down this track. That would get me some piety any other track that would get me piety that I can see so what do I got I got blue which will move me down here which will get me to five which will let me open the large granary I also have two stone which I can either start moving down this track or more likely keep moving down this track for more defense all right yeah that's what I'm doing all right so for this I'm gonna open up the five uh, or I could have put one on the wall because I didn't use my train this turn, but I'm not going to do it. And then we use two stone, one, two, to move two down this track. The first one gets me nada. The second one gets me a yellow and a shield. Shield, we're defending down the middle. And yellow track. All right. So that is turn three. And as you can see, the game definitely accelerates. <laughs> It <laughs> definitely, you're doing a couple actions early, and then more and more as the game goes along. Wanted to leave myself some room there. All right, so that is turn three. We are going to get attacked at the end of the round by four bad people. One up the middle, one on the right, another one up the middle, and last one left. Sweet. All right, so I did defend two in the middle, defended the one on the left, defended the one on the right. That is awesome sauce. So I defended all of it. So you'll notice we get two on this round. And then we are going to move two up the Valor track. All right. And that did give me a 
black worker. And that does come to my board right now. Uh, that comes to my board. So I will get it for the following round. At the end of the game, not as useful. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to be flipping these literally every turn with mine. So I've had three turns. I've never used any of their stuff, which tends to be the case early. But yeah, so that's something else to remember at the beginning of the round. Uh, this is only true in solo and two player. Do you need to worry about that? Actually, when I was building down here, that might have made a difference because I'm trying to do rows, I think. Uh, oh, no, I'm doing cohorts, citizens tracks and resource production. So I'm trying to fill up these tracks down here. I'm trying to do um, cohorts, fill these up, and I'm trying to do, oh, so that was citizen tracks and foragers. I'm trying to get as many of these hammers as I can uh, filled up. The good news is I've only got one more over here to get, and then these two, and is that the last three? Yeah, and that'll be three victory points at the end of the game. So kind of sweet. All right, three rounds down. Let's keep it rolling. Well, yes let's see what people we are getting for the next round and let's move over here do 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 so temples or large buildings all right so large buildings are stuff like large granary which i will definitely be getting next turn Host hotel workshop and roads so those are all large um large precinct over here Large gardens I will probably get. I'm actually, large temple, zero chance I'm getting. But isn't the other thing temples? Yeah, so zero chance I'm doing temples. Let's go and do engineer buildings, large buildings. Let's see how many we can get. All right, so I'm going to be getting two extra purple workers from this card. I'll just take those first. Then we will get a soldier, two teal workers, two more purple workers. Two yellow civilians, one stone. We already got our resources from there. Oh, let's not forget to flip the AI card, which is still doesn't really matter. Uh, all right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six stone. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then I also get one yellow worker and one blue worker from down here. Hey, that's convenient. All righty, now I get lots of stuff. All right, my goal this turn is really to try to start filling these road spaces. I've already got, well, and I gotta build the large granary because I feel like I definitely need to get to the end of this track. That's a large building, there's a lot of stuff. So let's see, a purple and a blue. Don't do that. <laughs> that is a TTS problem. Uh, not a game problem. Oh my gosh. All right. So let's get all our workers back on our board, shall we? So purple and a blue. And what is the other thing I get? Purple and a blue and two stone. Oh my gosh. To be honest, that's not a real life problem because you, your pieces won't disappear through a board. Plus you won't accidentally pick up a board in real life. Uh, all right, so that gets me the large granary, which does two things. It not only opens that up, but it gets me one of these as well, which is one renown. All right, so I'm trying to get up this track to get the large gardens built as soon as humanly possible. So I need to get to seven. So I need two more workers here, which should be easy. One, two, let's go ahead and do that now. So that gets me that, which gets me a purple worker. And the second one I spent gets me here, which gets me another purple worker. I got a lot of purple workers, which can, which is good because I need them for getting up my mining. But, uh, oh, I, I already opened up the granary. So I'm actually can go to the end of the mining track now. Maybe I do that. Um, but let's see if I need them for any of this stuff. Yeah, so two purple and a blue and a stone. I want to do that. So two purple. 
a blue and a stone. Let's me open up this, which gives me uh, down one of the tracks. So do I want to go down purple track or uh, blue track down at the bottom here? Let's go down the purple track. I will be pious. And that means every turn I get to go down one of these tracks during the income step. I want to get to six here, so that way I can build this too. Purple, blue, and two stones. I'm going to need a blue. So let's use these two warriors here to move me down this track, which gets me a yellow and to the six. Do, 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 do. So yellow and to the six spot there, which... Do, do, do. Not only lets me build up here, which would be good if I ever start getting stone again. Uh, actually, I'd love to get... A, do I have a lot of stone? I do have a lot of stone. All right. So, but I want to get a free yellow worker every turn, which would seem good. Any yellow worker now. Of course, if I get there, I can use my stone for that. <sighs> decisions, decisions. All right. I got a lot of purple. What is purple good for? Purple is good for training over here. But actually, didn't I want to build this? This is why I was trying to get down the seven track. So let's do this. Purple, blue, two stone. Need blue. So how do I use my yellow to get me a blue worker? Is that even possible? Doesn't look possible right now. It's pretty terrible. And get another purple here, which just let me train like crazy. One of my gladiators, which might not be the worst thing ever. Need the blue to get this. Oh, I have a blue right here. Fell off my board. Woo! <laughs> yes! Uh, so if I get that, it only gets me yellow though. But it's a yellow worker every turn. Oh, and then I could use four stone, which I don't have. So is there something better I could do? Could I build this? to then move me up some of these tracks over here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to I'm going to just purple, blue. Although that doesn't get me That's all right. I can get another purple. All right. So let's go back. Purple and blue again. Blue, purple, and two stone. Let's do it. I'm leaving myself wide open for a pretty big attack. Six attack this turn. Oh my goodness. There's 0% chance I can defend any of that. Um, yes, because I have not done a very good job of getting down this track. I've been so focused down here. But that does get me another yellow worker every turn and a current yellow worker as well as down this uh, track down here. Oh, which gets me another yellow worker. So two yellow workers right now. Boom, boom. Do I train my gladiators and do some gladiator fighting? Gladiator fighting will let me get down the purple track or the yellow track if I win. Huh. So where do I want to go with this? In order to go down this track, I am going to need to get higher up on this track. But I really want to do this. Oh, that's what I was thinking about doing this turn. Oh, well, that's all right. Getting a yellow worker every turn. I'm not going to complain about that. Two purple does not get me to here. So I need a third purple. So let's do that. So yellow is going to go here. Gets me another purple worker. Then I'm going to use one, two, three purple workers to move down one, two, three which gets me one on my income track there and a current stone right here. Actually, I need to be nine here to get that, which isn't happening this turn. Oh, I could get another stone here, which would get me four, which would get me a blue worker every turn. Seems good. All right, so I'm going to spend this to get a stone, although maybe I should defend. I got all this stone. Oh, yes. Let's put that there. All right. So with all this stone, maybe I should focus a little, maybe not overly focus, but a little even on defending. Can't use it for there. 
I could use it to get me a yellow worker, which isn't. So four, one, two, three, four. I could start getting some warriors, actually. So I could move down this track a little. I don't know that I'm getting three. Seems like a stretch here. Um, oh, all I need is one warrior to move down one more space, which gets me another defense. And opens up this bottom defense. Yeah, so I'm going to focus on defense here. All right. So for this yellow, I am going to... Ah, I was about to say, I thought there was a spot. Yes, get this warrior, and I'm going to spend that warrior immediately to move down this fort track, which gets me down the blue track, and gets me a defense. I'm just going to spread my defense and go down the blue track. Which again, remember, this is victory points. This is why we're doing this. Um, all right, four stone... I think I'm going to spend one, two, three for this. One, two, three stone moves me three spaces over here. One, two, that gets me a yellow worker and a defensive spot. We're going left. So I get a yellow worker still and a spot up this track. Do, do, do. All right. And I got my defense already. Okay. So I can't go any further without... Um, Oh, I built my large grainer without building here, though. All right, so I have one stone left, which maybe at some point I should start building on this uh, <laughs> track. All right, well, let's see. What can I do with these two? And go down the yellow, which doesn't do me any good, and get another stone. Would that do me any good? I can go... I have two yellow. So that gives me a black worker here. Not much here. Black worker there. I mean, this seems like the, the appropriate move. So two yellow moves me two down this track. So one moves me on this Valor track. The other one gets me a resource. Now I have two resources, which I can't go any further here because I'm chained. So I'm going to spend these two resources. I need four for this. I don't have any buildings here that'll let me spend stone, which probably should have done earlier. Oh, but yeah, no, I don't have any places that let me spend stone right now. Uh, later on, I'm definitely going to need it for baths because of how much trouble I'm in over here. Uh, let's go ahead and just move down one of the defensive tracks over here. We will start down this track, which at the beginning is slow, but quickly picks up. Um, lots of defense for these next couple stone, although I got to move quite a bit on the bottom. All right, and let's go ahead and defend now. So we are going to defend how many cards? Six cards. Oh my goodness. That means I have to have exactly, well, I got an extra one on the left. So middle, two, three, four, five. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. And thank you. Yep. So that is defended equally down all of them. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Two turns left. Ah, so I defended all of that. So I get three now, which will move me one, two, three spaces down this track, which gets me a soldier at the beginning of the next round. All right. That worked out pretty well. Pretty, pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and start the second to last round, the fifth round. All right, so we're getting two soldiers. One, two. We are getting two of these workers. We're getting one of these workers, one of these workers, two stone. And then let's pick our card. So we get to keep one. The other one becomes a resource card. And then let's flip the AI's cards, even though, again, I have not used them, not even a little bit this game. All right, so Gladiator Strength, which I've moved zero on the Gladiator Strength track, or Defender. Completed wall sections. Huh, well, I've already completed two. That seems like the better choice at this point of the game. And then I will just get the purple and the stone.
All right, so what do I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's start with seven of these resource cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seems like I'm happy. All right, we're gonna get two yellow workers. One, two yellow workers. And then we are going to get one blue worker. I'm blue, abadi, abadai. All right, and then I get to go up one of these sections of my choice. I'm gonna do this one just so I get another blue worker because that seems good. That's one of my choices, right? Yep, any of the victory point tracks. Sweet. So I'd like to get this. I'd also like to get, I mean, this is pretty easy for me to get. And I'll get a Valor and a Blue Worker right away for four stone. Let's go ahead and just... Would you stop picking up the whole board? Seriously. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh. It's out of control. My TTS skills are off, apparently. Uh, okay. But thankfully, I have a physical copy. Again, much easier to do in the physical copy. All right. So... Um, I checked this box, so I will be getting extra blue worker next turn, but I'm going to get a blue and a yellow, well, yellow track blue worker now. All right. We were all yellow. It's a lot of blue workers, which will let me get down to the nitty gritty over here. Uh, I kind of want to move down this track because I really feel like I need to start defending some got plenty of stone to do it, but maybe I want stone. Well, I kind of want... All right. First things first. I did this on purpose to build this large thing. So that's a purple and a blue and two stone. So let's just... Would you stop with your TTS skills today? Oh my gosh. That was a purple. There's a blue. Two stone. I could lock this board in, but the problem is then I couldn't put stuff under it. Let's see. All right, I'll lock it and I'll unlock it to put stuff under it because that that's enough of that. You, you would think I would have figured it out like 10, 10 years ago? No. All right. Wait, what did I just do? Ah, I did this. I built the large gardens. Let's do them one at a time. So that's the purple track here. Then the money bags. I saw the theater was next. Then the track I'm on and the scales. So track I'm on and the scales. The track I'm on got me a purple. So that gets me a purple worker. Do this to do that to do the other. And the last thing is the ring track. Which gets me up on the yellow track. Which gets me a yellow worker. Which makes me happy. Okay. All right. I am going to need to um, unlock these baths here. I'm also going to need to defend myself even better. And I want to fill these tracks. Like, that is one of my goals here. Uh, and I'm getting eight cards this turn. So, yeah. As best I can. All right. I'm going to spend three stone here. One. Seriously? Seriously, TTS? One, two, three. Three. Let's see with the board locked. Can I put this under or not? Question of the day. No, of course not. I could pull it out. No problem. Can't put it under. All right. So I spent three stone. You get back over there uh, to move three spots up. One. So it gets me a yellow worker and two on this track. So that's two blue spots. And I got my yellow worker. Two blue spots, which, oops, that would have been nice to skip spots, but no. All right, so now a yellow gets me nowhere. I kind of want to focus on some guards up here. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four. Remember, I can do that. This is round five. This will be my only one use on round five. But 
That was four total, so I get to go four spots down. One, two, three, four. Seems like one less than I wanted. Uh, I do go one up on the blue track and one shielded spot. Which does get me another blue worker. All right, lots of blue workers. Need stone, got lots of blue workers. All right, what can I do with a lot of blue workers? Blue doesn't fight here. Blue moves me up, oh, this track down here, which seems good. All right, so I'll get rid of, let's start with one, two to get me a yellow worker. So seven, that opened up. Oh, well, all right, I went out of order. I could not have built this earlier till I had done that. So sorry, that was cheating. Uh, so do I wanna build this? Two purple and a blue, I do have that. Let's do it. All right, so one more blue to move down this track. Two purple and a blue. And is that all I need for this? and two stone, which I don't have. Let's get our two purple and a blue back. Let's figure out how to get some stone, shall we? Gotta be a way. I know I can get stone here, but how about on any of these tracks? If I go all the way up this track, I definitely get one stone. If I go up this track, I definitely get one stone. I don't care about trading, but I was talking about doing this, which would be able to get me other stone. So let's do it. One, two, three yellows to get me a blue, yellow track, and stone. Blue, stone, and yellow track. Okay, so now I got the two stone I need. Two stone. Where am I? Two stone, two purple, and a blue. One blue, two purple. Gets me this. So it's going to get me a second one of anything any year and I get to pick yellow or black right now we'll go up yellow track try to get it to this 15 points quick if we can uh, plus yellow workers get me down these tracks here so I have blue which again will get me down here let's go ahead and do one for sure which moves me here which gets me a yellow worker All right, so now I love stone, but start moving up other tracks. This will get me some stuff here. Do I want that? Do I want the purple worker? I mean, I can get a couple warriors here, which will get me down this track. All right, so that seems good. So one, two, we'll move down two tracks to get two warriors. We'll move down this track to get this warrior and this track to get this warrior. So that's two warriors. We're gonna spend those two warriors to go in blue spot and this and blue um i can get another warrior let's do that with this one which i will use to move down do i even them out or do i i'm going hardcore left which moved me down this track although hmm, even them out probably would have been smarter there if i can get one more warrior that would be nice. Uh, and I've already used my free warrior this turn. So what can I do with a blue? What can I do with a blue, dude? What can I do with a blue, dude? What can I do with a blue, dude? Early in the morning. Looks like I can't do anything. Looks like I can't do anything. Looks like I can't do anything because I'm not very smart. All right. Um... Yep, so I will just go down this track. I'm track going down all the tracks. I'm going down all the tracks. All right, so let's go ahead and complete our second to last round of the game. And we are going to get attacked. We are getting attacked by eight cards. Let's see how this turns out, shall we? Did I open up the baths? I did not. I'm at three. I can open up the baths. I only have one disdain. Uh, no, somebody got through turn one and somebody got through turn two. That is for sure. I have two. Yeah, I messed that up. All right. 
All right, so eight, did we say? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, uh, three defense right. Well, that was my problem area. And I got it. All right. That defended all eight of them. Oh, my gosh. I've been getting lucky that they are coming out, like, evenly. Now, multiplayer, everybody's dealing with the same luck one way or another. Although, I guess some people could build their defenses differently, of course. Um, all right. So, that's eight. Unlock this. Put this under. All right. Under, please. Okay. Uh, I defended all eight. So I get three on this Valor track here. One. Oops. That is not the one I wanted. So let's copy that. And one, two, three. Alrighty. So we get a soldier. All right. Last two cards. Last two cards for the AI. Last two cards for us. Let's get our card. So... We start with two additional soldiers. We start with two teal dudes. We start with a purple person. We start with a yellow civilian. We start with two resource cubes. And then we get to pick architect. Do we want to construct landmarks or wall guard sections? I mean, it feels like wall guard sections, right? Oh, no, these are wall guard sections. Ah, uh, three more will complete a second wall guard section. Yeah, we'll do that, and we'll just get two stone. We're going to have a lot of stone this turn, but I like stone, so that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and get, we're going to lock this. We'll get our two stone from that, or resources, or whatever they're called. Don't grab the cards underneath. Don't do it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stone. Let's do that, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like when I have to dip into the bag. It means I'm progressing further than I was before. Two yellow and two blue. Clearly not progressing over here with yellow and blue. <laughs> that is okay. All right, and then do 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 do. Um, now I get to move up two tracks of my choice. Oh, I didn't fill this in last turn, but yes, get to go up two tracks of my choice. Let's do this and get a yellow, and do this and get a black worker, which are the soldiers. All right, so let's look at the end game scoring card, shall we? Before we decide what we're doing on the last round. So completed citizen tracks. We haven't completed... Oh, no, we've completed one here. We've got another one, two pretty close. Those two are going to require more work. Uh, you, for f four, you get two. You need to get to five to get the third one. So maybe I, I stick it two. We'll see uh, for one victory point. Uh, completed cohorts. That's up top here. I've almost got one done. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, forager... Producing resources, uh, so I need to go down to the end of this track. So what's before nine? Uh, six. I'm already at six. I'm producing seven a turn. I don't think it's worth it to go down to the end of that or build this. Yeah, I produced seven. Yeah, that's two victory points already. I'm not going to focus on that. Large buildings. That one I may focus on. Uh, I got the large granary done. I got the large, all three of these. So that's four. How many large buildings do I need? Four gets me two. I need two more. Uh, I've got the large gardens done. So what's the last thing? Courthouse? Is, is it really courthouse? No, 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 no. It's temple. Yeah. Oh, I guess I just have to build the temple. But you do have to build them in order. So yeah, that's not going to happen. All right. So I'm done with the larges. Wall sections and wall guard sections. All right. So wall... All right, so we could focus on this 
and wall guard and that will actually help me get this as well so wall wall guard i mean no reason not to do this also all right so i'm definitely going to need two spaces here for sure so let's go ahead and feel like i'm going to need the soldiers for the wall guard so i'm going to spend two to move down i get a yellow Let's just do that now so we don't forget, which is going to help me complete this stuff. Did I do gladiators? No, I didn't. Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> uh, and then I will spend another. Oh, I spent two already. Uh, and then I'm going to get a blue and a defense. So I'll just get two blue. Ah, which gets me a blue builder. All right, now we're going to go down this wall guard section. One, two, three. Let's start there. One, two, three. Uh, and what does that get me? <laughs> uh, so another blue. And another defender. So we'll put that there. Get me up on the Valor track. Trying to get to 15 on these tracks. I've done a pretty poor job of that. So I can start buying these things, which help me get up on other tracks, right? So it's like a get this to get this to get the other thing. So if I get this cohort track up two more times, I then, for a blue and two stone, can move up this track a couple times. But again, you're just turning points into points, which is good. All right, I've got all the stone in the world. So let's start using it. So I'm going to spend two stone to move up there and there just because it's both on the same track it makes it easier there we go i'm getting to 15 there too all right now i'm going to spend one more to get a yellow worker here spend one more to get a defense section gets me the last center one which moves me up the blue track we're getting there we're getting there all right Ooh, I might get up a bunch of tracks all at once here. All right, I just need three more total. So wall or wall guard would do this. Unless I've messed up the count somehow, I think I'm good. Um, well, wall makes more sense because that's just stone, which I got a million of. So that and then a yellow section and a wall section. So I get a yellow worker and now... I do have, uh, I am to 15, so I can buy, uh, whatchamacallit, I can buy the yellow one of these, which gets me two up on the black, which is good. So, two stone and a blue worker, let's do that, a blue worker and two stone, yellow's at 15, I can buy this landmark gets me two up on the black track which gets me another soldier and gets me to 15 which allows me to buy the black uh, landmark and should we do that probably although I do want my other three stone so I'm gonna have to think about that Unless there's another way to get stone, soldiers can actually get me stone. What's mine? Oh, mine's the straightaway. Which means I could get two for two soldiers. Oh, by the way, this should be filled in because I clearly spent the soldier earlier. All right, so using my own card here for two soldiers, I can definitely get two stone. I have two soldiers here. I'd like three soldiers, though, to get to here to complete this. So let's let's figure this out. Three stone gets me there. Which gets me up the black. You know what? I'm not going to worry about completing that bottom thing right now. I'm going to spend my three stone. One, two, three stone. Four, one, two, three. Gets me yellow and a shield. Yellow worker. Okay. I got a lot of yellow workers. 
and the shield I already filled in, which got me up the Valor track down here. Okay, I got a lot of yellow. Let's start doing some stuff over here. Oh, man. Yes. I mean, I probably can get up all these civilian tracks if I really wanted to. Um, kind of want this. Two purple, a blue. All right. Let's just start moving up these tracks. I'm going to spend two yellow to get a yellow and a stone. So I get a stone. Got to spend two yellow workers. Then I'm going to spend one yellow worker to get a purple worker. Because we needed to complete these civilian tracks anyway. So I can get the three I need now to complete my last wall section. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to spend one, two, three through training. So that's my only training I can do on turn six. But that moves me up three. One, two, three gets me two blue. Gets me a blue worker. All right. So cohorts complete. I got that one. Uh, citizen tracks not complete, but I certainly could complete them all. I mean, this is probably worth quite a bit to move up this track that many times. So let me do baths. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'd like to do at least five, which I have five, which doesn't complete a civilian. So I do need to consider this. Let me see. Completed citizens. If I get four. So I could just complete this one. But this gets me three victory points. I mean, that's just worth more anyway. One, two, three, four, five. If I went up four, I'm only getting one victory point. Well, I could get two if I did one and one. Um, I'm at the three spot already. Two purple, a blue, and two stone. Do I have that? Two purple, a blue. I don't have two stone. Can I get stone on this track? No. Um, so is there a way for me to get stone just using my warriors, which I can't? No. Okay. This gets me more blue. What gets me more yellow? The yellow track gets me yellow. That makes sense. So how do I move up the yellow track? Building buildings, stuff like that. I really want to build these baths. So I need a stone. Any of these tracks give me stone. This track gives me stone. So purple get me stone there that seems stupid i think i'm gonna kill my dudes then i go up this purple track yeah i think i'm gonna kill my gladiators i'm gonna build gladiators and then kill them all right so for two purple warriors i'm gonna go ahead and strengthen up my gladiators and then send them to the fights <laughs> so i put one on each so the gladiator they're fighting against is strength two. So they are defeated. Or the first one. Uh, so that gets me two on the purple track when you lose. So you're very pious for fighting and losing. Uh, this one, again, two strength against my one. So my gladiator loses. I should put six dice up here that say six. I'm not going to bother. That's two more on the piety track. Which gets me a purple worker well my gladiators fought bravely you know i have all this and i could be doing it for free if i just built a building at any point which does get me up the yellow track which then gets me up the purple track all right i'm building it i'm building a theater so it's a purple a blue and a stone should have built this like 10 years ago Moves me up the yellow track, which then moves me up the purple track. Now, every turn I could have been doing this. I can do anywhere up to five. Oh, do any of these get me a yellow worker? No. So I can do any of these. Oh, but I get to spend a stone, which I don't have. So what are we talking about here? Nothing. All right. 
One, two, three. Let's start there. One, two, three. Blue worker. Second blue worker. So if you didn't catch that, this moved me up on this track, which then moved me back up on this track. So two blue workers coming my way. I don't even know what I can do with blue workers. At this point in the game, not a whole lot. I need stone. So I can get a soldier from doing this. Let's do that. That gets me a soldier. Soldiers make me happy. What did I just say I was doing? Ah, here. That could give me a victory point for my last yellow one too, if I got nothing better to do with it. But let's get that soldier. Soldier can move me up what? Well, oh, I was looking to come down here with my horses, right? That'll get me two stone if I spend it on mine. All right, so spend this to go one, two, three, four. No, I didn't complete any rows. That's okay. That got me two stone because I covered two stone spaces, which I know I wanted stone. I don't know if I still need stone. What do I want stone for? Well, I could get stone to do this, which gets me victory points for sure, but only once a year. Uh, oh, I never built this. So I have to build this if I wanted to fight with those warriors. I will do that. I don't know that I can. Well, I had two purple clearly to build that. Oh, man, I cheated big time. All right, can I get purple in any way, shape, or form? Uh, yeah, that was a cheat of epic proportions. So in order to take it back, let's just take it back for now. I will still do the fights if I can. So I moved up four on the purple track. So, one, two, three, four. So I got a purple. I don't know what I spent it on, but it doesn't matter because I spent two purple to go up there. I'm positive of that. I did not spend yellow. So I spent per two purple to go up there. So I have no strength here. This is nothing. Uh, so whatever I use the purple I gained on doesn't matter at this point. Um, I just don't have it. So I have one less purple. Because I never built this building. Which, yeah. Got to remember to build the buildings before you do the actions in the buildings. Uh, okay. So, can I build this building now? That's a question. So, can I get a purple any way, shape, or form? If I go up to blue, let me go up to purple. Not right away. Yellow. Well, all right. So yellow, we'll do this. So that moves me up the blue track. I have stone and I have workers. So I could, oh, blue and two stone moves me up, which gets me a purple. But then I don't have the stone I need. <laughs> this is, all right. So let's get up the valor track because that gets me another warrior. And I feel, oh, warrior can get me, ah, yes. All right. So let's move up the Valor track. So how do I move up the, oh, I already did the one that moves me up the Valor track. So I can't do that. I can move up either the yellow track to get me more yellow, which would finish off a thing. All right, yeah, let's do that. Let's move up the yellow track. So this blue track, I am at 15. So blue and two stone. So two stone and a blue. Uh, gets me double yellow here, boom, boom, which gets me a yellow worker, which I will then spend to go here, and get a blue worker. All right, let's see. We are at the end here. Blue workers can get me, purple get me here, which does literally nothing for me. I can trade in two for one. Maximum once per year. If I wanted to get blue into stone. Oh, I wanted a warrior. Uh, oh, but you can't trade for 
Warriors. So that's our that's a problem. That's a problem. That's right, I was trying to get up the warrior track. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. So blues. What can I use blues for? I mean I need stone for everything here, it looks like. Let's see. Stone, stone, stone. Except for this, which requires a lot of yellows, but that's stone, that's stone. A pure stone. I need the two stone, and then I need more stone. Uh I need a warrior, which I don't have. I need a warrior, which I don't have. So I might be done here. Uh, I mean, purple will certainly move me one up this track. But I don't think my blues can do anything at this point without stone or warriors. So that feels kind of wasted. But say la vie. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. All right. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six defense at each. So hopefully I don't get jobbed here. All right, 10 cards were flipping, and actually those would have been the first two since I never did the warrior action. What the hey? We'll use those two, so I'm not cheating. Oh, those that's bad. One, two, three. Oh, that's real bad. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I believe it's ten. Woo! Five on the right, it is 10. Yep, so I get four up on the Valor track. Oh, by the way, at the end of the round, if you don't use these, they go away. So I actually should have thrown these away before I do the Valor track stuff. All right, so I do go four up on the Valor track. One, two, yes, three, four, which gets me one up on this track, so close. Uh, I do get a Warrior for the next round, but guess what? That's the sixth and final round. So let's add it up. And I am going to use one of these calculators for this. All right. So we will add up our tracks. I got 20 here. Boom, 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 boom. So yellow, 20 track. Seven on the piety track. I'm not very pious. I got valor. I am very valorous. I got 21 on the valorous track. So that goes up to 48. Bum, 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 I get 20 more on the discipline tracks. So that's 68. All right. And 70 is the score we're going for, right? That seems good. Let's check our path cards. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Completed citizen tracks. We have one, two, three, four completed citizen tracks. Four is worth two victory points. Boom, boom. 70. I'm done scoring. No, I'm just kidding. Completed cohort tracks. One, two, three completed cohort tracks. That is three victory points. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Forager resource production. I am at seven. Remember that resource production. I am at seven, so I'm going to get two victory points there. Boom, boom. Let's go to engineer large buildings. So this is only my third time playing, by the way. So not that you think I'm some kind of savant playing like a basic game here. Uh, all right. So large buildings. Let's count them. All right. Large granary. One. Uh, large uh, hotel, workshop, and road. That's four. I don't think there's buildings down there. Uh, did not build a large precinct. So I'm still at four. Gardens, five, and that's it. Five gets me two victory points. Boom, boom. Defender, completed wall sections. Guess what? Whole wall. All three sections completed. Whoops. So three completed wall sections is one, two, three victory points. And completed wall guard sections well, one, two are completed. Didn't complete the last one. So that's two. Now we do our negative points. So we've let two attacks through. Uh, so if you look down here, two attacks is minus three points. One, two, three, 79 points. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And that is how you play Hadrian's Wall. So what do I think? I think I made my opinions pretty clear. I am keeping this one, at least for now. Um, so for those of you, if Mike hasn't done Hadrian's Wall yet on his uh, shelf stories, you have a, a freebie. So there you go. A little cross promotion there. Um, 
because he did not keep it. He gave it to me. Now, maybe he'll want it back. I don't know. Um, but as of now, he doesn't have it. I have it. So that is Hadrian's Wall. Um, I, I love games where you do stuff to get other stuff. Would I like this game multiplayer? I'm not sure because you're doing so much on your own board. And I feel like if somebody's better than somebody else, then they're gonna go either really fast or their turns are gonna take super long because they're gonna trade in this to get this, to get the other thing, to do the other thing, to do the third thing. Like, and somebody else is just gonna like spend out their workers and not have all these super duper combos. So I, I do notice this is my third time playing. Each time I've gotten better and better at doing the combos. So I think it is a game where you do get better and better as you go along. Would I want to play this game a hundred times? That I'm not sure of. That's the only thing I would say. Multiplayer I'm not sure about. Would I want to play it a hundred times? I'm not sure about, but I have loved it the three times I have played it. Am I looking forward to doing this campaign? Solo campaign, 16 missions? I don't know. It depends how fun these missions are. I haven't done it, right? So I know in all of them, it seems like you have to score at least 70 points. Well, no, later on, it goes down to 65. This is a free print and play that they have available online. I mean, so you're basically building down the wall uh, as you go and trying to complete certain challenges as you go. Um, it seems kind of fun. Like, I don't know. This seems like something I might want to do. Let me know if you want to see me do one or two uh, on the stream. I have no idea what all this is. Uh, construct empty wall sections. So it looks like there is just like multiple different like ways to play solo um, beside what's straight in the box. But I think you'll have fun playing it right out of the box too. Um, it's a fairly small box. I have it right here. So if you look in the little window here, uh, it's a fairly small box. So uh, pretty portable. It is very heavy because you have a lot of sheets of paper in there. But yeah, I don't know. I, I have had a lot of fun with it. I am somebody who loves engine building games. I love building up this stuff at the bottom here. So I'm getting more and more stuff the further and further this game goes along. I love like tactical games. This game is very tactical to me, even though it's like, okay, well, long term, I want to do these um, certain goals. Honestly, I tend to do similar goals each time, like defending the wall. The cohorts one seems pretty obvious to me. Um, building the fort, I, I like kind of want to do each time. So I'm not sure if it's me not getting out of my comfort zone or if it's the game itself being like, no, really, these are the obvious ones you're going to be doing anyway every time. So there is no reason to pick any other one when they come up in the, in the card draw. So that worries me a little bit. Um... But yeah, uh, for the most part, I think it's really good. Janet asked me what mod I am using. This is Tabletop Simulator. Again, I do have the game. It was a review copy sent to us by Renegade Games. We don't play games on the stream that we don't own a physical copy of unless we get permission from the publisher. Um, I don't know if it's an official mod or not. It's the solo mod. There's something that says like Hadrian's, uh, Hadrian's Wall solo mod on TTS. I can put the link in the show notes so that way you will have it at the end, Janet. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I have fun with it. I've had fun with it every time. What do I worry about in the future? Like I said, I worry about replayability. Am I going to continue to have fun with it? Am I going to continue exploring and finding new stuff each time? I don't know that I would just playing in the base game. Certainly there are certain sections down here that I've almost never used. I've barely ever used this section. I've almost never built this. Um... I definitely have never really spent time focused on the market, but I'm hoping that's what the solo campaign is going to like fix, not fix, but like really kind of guide you down certain paths. And if there really are 16 missions of the solo campaign, holy moly. Um, I mean, definitely worthwhile, definitely worthwhile checking out if you get a chance. Um, again, I don't know how the campaign works. I don't know if this is a modded campaign. I do know that there is one official one, um, online, and I can put a, a link to that in the show notes as well. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm curious to explore the campaign, but honestly, a game that I'm more interested in exploring the campaign, which is also a engine builder is Arnak. I haven't played that campaign and I hear that campaign is excellent. So between the two, which would I play? Probably Arnak, um, which is super easier to set up and pull out and transport with you, not Arnak. 
Hadrian's Wall has that in huge advantage in the physical copy. Um, again, it's super small to carry around with you. Would I rather play this or something else? It's size. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of is like the Tiny Epic games, and I'd way rather play this than any of the Tiny Epic games that I've played. So for something that's somewhat portable, it's super heavy. It's got a lot of weight because it's a lot of sheets of paper, but honestly, you could just bring a couple of sheets of paper with you, like two or three maps, um, or two or three sets of papers. You, I mean, you don't need this board here. I mean, if you know how many bad guys come out every turn, that's really all this board is for. You don't need to put your stuff on it. Um, you know, you could tell which is the top of your card. Like, I mean, it's nice to have this, but again, this is fairly small too. So you could transport this game really easily. You grab like three of each sheet. I mean, that's three games you could play while you're off on a trip somewhere. I really do think that there is a lot of value here and a lot of benefit to it. Multiplayer, I've never played it multiplayer. You've seen how it plays solo. I can't imagine multiplayer would be fun. Um just because you're literally just waiting on everybody else to finish their turn. Maybe it's fun to like, I mean, you're really doing your own solo puzzle. Yes, you can use their boards, give them a resource to like produce one of these things. Or again, I don't do this market, so I, I don't know. I've never really, so maybe giving them a resource to do that. And that is somewhat interesting. I've done it against the AI, which means again, they get more cards. I don't know. I, would I play it multiplayer? Of course I would. Um, getting, But I almost feel like if I had one other person to play with, I would teach them to play solo. I think I would have enough fun pointing out things that they could do th that, I, you know, not alpha gaming them, of course, but just like, you know, don't forget if you've got yellow workers, look on the right side of the board. Th those are things you could do. Maybe it'll get your workers of other colors. Oh, you got a bunch of blue workers. Well, let's see on the right side where we can use blue workers. And honestly, like I wouldn't know myself um, <laughs> because again, I don't use everything every time. I treat this as a very tactical game where every time I'm playing, I'm like, okay, what is the best thing I can do now? Um, and for me, it's very fun as a tactical game. Like I said, once I get to know everything a lot better, will I still be having the same level of fun? I don't know, but I I'm enjoying it myself for now. All right, we got a lot of questions out there. Uh, Janet says, yes, I have the game. And like TTS, when I got my game table as something else set up. Thank you. Yep, Janet, I totally agree. I am a huge fan of TTS. Even as a game designer, like I want to put out demos for all my games for everybody to play. Do I want a fully playable copy? Maybe not. Um, I, I do think there is inherent value in letting people play, um, especially, well, we do a lot of campaign games when we're designing. So because of that, there is some inherent, well, I've played through the campaign. Do I really need to play through it again? Maybe you would with, want to with your friends, but I, I do think there is a good reason to give people certainly a good sample of your game online so that they can try it before they have to pay any money. Um, Thomas says, Barrett wouldn't like this. It doesn't have enough bosses to make questionable plans for fighting. Well, I mean, come on. You're fighting, defending. Can't, didn't it feel like you were defending when you flipped up a bunch of cards and hoped they didn't come down the wrong area? No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't. I, I agree with you that it doesn't necessarily feel like fighting. By the way, I just realized I added a second one here, but I really shouldn't have. <laughs> That's okay. I I realized that I did that as an example. I said, oh, if I didn't block them, it would have been one and one on this second turn. But I did block both of them. That's okay. I would have lost one victory point. I'd have two more victory points at the end of the game. No problem. We all know that now. Uh, let's see. Edward says, can you compare this solo-wise to Twilight Inscription? I can't, Edward. Um, only because I've only played Twilight Inscription about a third of the game. So at Gen Con this year, Fantasy Flight had content creators and they did demos specifically for us where the designer walked us through it. I did not get through a full game of Twilight Inscription. Um, yeah, I don't know. Twilight Inscription, honestly, even though this, like going through the rules took a, a minute to go through the rules here, everything kind of flowed, right? Like, if you have yellow workers, go on this side. Like, this side is very clear and straightforward to me. This side is the one where it's like, I feel like you kind of have to make more decisions where you want to go. 
I felt like Twilight Inscription, even though it limited you to one board at a time. So Twilight Inscription is this big Fantasy Flight game that uses four different boards. This one only uses two. It uses twice as many. But you're really only focused on one board at a time. I felt like my first time playing that, I was way more confused. And I was being taught by the designer themselves. And I was still more confused with that one than I was with this one. This one seems more straightforward to me which I know to some people who look at this giant board with all these different spots you can go to. Um, but that one seemed more convoluted to me. Combat seemed more convoluted to me in that. That is more of a polyomino game on that one. You could see the influence for sure from something like Hadrian's Wall. Now, was it direct influence or was it parallel design? I have no idea whether one influenced the other. What I do know is there are some similarities between... Um, I mean, especially just the fact that maybe just po polyometers are hot, right? So people wanted to put polyometers in a lot of games. Um, if I had to pick, uh, and that one's also less portable for sure. The box is much bigger. Um, the boards, because they are dry erase markers, they are much, um, you, they're not flexible like this would be. Like these are just sheets of paper. Like literally you bring around the bag of meeples with you and you bring around the little tiny board that you put at the top and just a few sheets of paper and you're good for this one. Um, whereas Twilight Inscription, it's going to take up more space in your luggage for sure. So portability, I think this one has the advantage. That one didn't feel as much like an engine builder to me. I guess you're teching up so you're using more dice wherever you go. Uh, that one is dice, so there is an advantage there. I typically like dice more than I like cards. Um, but I don't know. I, I, there's something satisfying about turning two yellow meeples in to go up a track and get a blue meeple back. I, I don't know what it is. Like it, This is almost a zen game for me. I, I really enjoyed it uh, because of that. So that's the most I can say about Twilight Inscription. Um, and that's it for questions. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and come back and watch the other content we do. We do a lot of Marvel Champions stuff, but I'm also trying to get a lot more solo plays out there. Uh, we're even doing digital solo plays now, so stuff that's only available like through the ages uh, th that has solo mode only digitally. Uh, Demio, which is a... Uh, video game only adaptation of a board game which has never been made so it's like a dungeon crawl board game uh that one i've really been into playing with my kids lately so i'll probably have more games of that coming up uh soon um plus marvel united we we cover a lot of stuff on this channel most of our plays here are multiplayer plays uh whereas most of the plays on our main channel are mostly solo plays uh so yeah come back join us uh, and hopefully you enjoyed this video and we will see you soon. Thanks again. Bye.